Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone. Thank you for being so patient. Um, I had a few technical difficulties getting things started. Uh, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and tonight we are going to do the March 2019 Chemnitz Dialogue. Each month I pick a photo to use as the inspiration for uh, a new colorway. Sometimes I do multiple different versions in the video, but I, all, I try to pull from the photo inspiration for the colors that we're going to use and sometimes the technique and really just like to have some fun. This month I picked a photo, which you can see right up there, of this really curious fox. I loved the sort of burnt orange and the hints of yellow, green, black, brown, and gray. And I thought that it would be a different, these are, this is a color combination that I have never played with before. So I'm really, really excited to sort of go in and play with these shades. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and the best part about these dialogues is that I will be dyeing colors, um, yarn inspired by this photo in this live stream, but I'm also inviting you to dye along with me and do your own version inspired by the photos that I pick. Uh, so you can share these pictures with me um, on the Chemnitz Facebook page. There's a pinned post uh, with this inspiration photo. Uh, or you can share your, your yarn on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialong. And then I'll pick some of the some of your yarn and feature it in the recap for this live stream at the beginning of April. And so it's just it's a lot of fun and you know you don't have to nail the colors exactly. It's really what about this inspires you, whether it's the exact colors, the tones, um, something, a texture. And yeah, just let me know what it is about you this photo that inspired you. And I can't wait to hear more about it. <laughs> and I see in the chat you guys are talking about um, a wonderful song, What Does the Fox Say? Which that song came out while I was pregnant with my eldest. And we, yes, I think for his first few months of life, we sang that song almost daily. <laughs> so I'm a huge, huge fan of it. Um, uh, you don't know Meow? Oh gosh. I mean, maybe later I'd sing it, although I don't want to get like a copyright claim, <laughs> but I probably know all the words to that song. Um, <laughs> green, 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 green. Okay. Actually, if you type into Google, what does the fox say? And you have like the sound on, Google will go through a couple of those iterations, which is just pretty fun. Um, but yes, anyway, let's get to it and start dyeing some yarn. Ooh, ooh, one other announcement. Um, I decided to, whoa, that's not what I wanted to copy. <laughs> I decided to have a little fun this month. And so we are actually having a flash sale, a little flash sale for the dialogue in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store. So for about 24 hours, if you use the code um, dialogue flash at checkout, you can save 10% off um, all of the ready to ship skeins of yarn in my shop. Um, and all these skeins are ones that have been dyed in past and some upcoming commit tutorials YouTube videos. Uh, the only things that the coupon does not work for is Dial um, Dye Pot Weekly sponsorship and then the add on and the add on for that or the skein winding service. But otherwise it works on basically everything else in the shop. Um, <laughs> I love the viral kid song controversy that's going on. But yes, we can see this curious, curious fox up here. Um, and I'm just really excited. I really wanted to play with orange in a way that didn't feel like, you know, a tree changing color, which I suppose this might end up feeling a little like that. I'm not sure. But I wanted to play with orange in a way that wasn't quite pumpkin, wasn't quite a tree changing color, wasn't quite sunset. And so I know, yeah, I'm just really, really excited to play with these and see where we end up. I am planning to do a few different yarn bases today. Let me 
stand up. So the ones that I have yet to pre-soak are one of our favorites, Knit Picks. Where's the camera? <laughs> I gotta turn the laptop so I can see. Okay, one of our favorites, Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. Um, this is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. I use it all the time. It's one of my staples. Um, next is Knit Picks Big O in the colorway Dove Heather. This is another one I really, really like. And I'm just sort of curious to see how these tones that are sort of deep and hopefully a little muted to begin with will interplay with a gray base. This one is 50% Superwash Merino, 50% Nylon. And then finally, I like to pull out maybe something that I haven't tried before in these live streams. And this base is Knit Picks Woodland Tweed, um, which is 80% Merino, 15% Baby Alpaca, 5% Viscose. And the Viscose is these naps. Um, and so this yarn, oh, which is so, so soft, it's a heavy iron weight, heavy worsted yarn. Um, the naps are brown and black. And so I just thought that this sort of colorway would work especially well with these naps. I mean, bright colors, neon colors would work really fun with this too. It's just, I'm dealing with a woodland creature. So woodland tweed feels like a wonderful, wonderful yarn. But you might notice that these yarns are dry. I have not pre-soaked them yet. <laughs> and so what I'm gonna do right now, and I think, oh goodness. Um, I'm not even sure what's in the video description. Um, going and checking. Yes, okay. Um, I have some of the items that I use a lot in the video description. Uh, Knit Picks is actually having a sock yarn sale right now. And so uh, through tomorrow, and it's worth checking out. Um, I believe strolls are 10% off, um, gloss is like heavily discounted. Capretta Superwash is heavily discounted. So it's just worth checking out. Um, I will be using tonight my favorite um, hotel steam pan. Where's the camera? There we go. Um, and I'm using some of these reusable nylon zip ties on the yarn. Sometimes I add them after I have pre-soaked the yarn. Other times I will add them um, before, like right now, uh, but it's night. It makes it easy to flip the yarn while I'm dyeing, but dyeing it. But also, it's just another tie to keep things from getting tangled. So I'm gonna go pre-soak these in some plain cat water. But we aren't gonna have to wait 30 minutes to start dyeing. I just wanted to show this as bare yarn to all of you uh, before we got started and I'm going to get started with some other yarn bases that are new to me even though the fiber contents are new. So as soon as I have these in the water, uh, where did I put them? Hmm. The other ones I have pre-soaked, but I don't know where, what I did with them. <laughs> It's like as I was setting up my counter. Hmm. What? Is it in the, oh, I bet it's in the, oh, here it is. <laughs> oh, this is the dining room table. All right, the other yarn, and don't worry, the little fox won't be there the whole time. Um, the other yarn that I'm going to start with uh, is some yarn from Yarn Undyed. Not from Yarn Undyed. <laughs> Whoops. The other yarn that I'm going to be using today is some from Dyer Supplier, which is the bear yarn company associated with Knit Crate. They generously sent me some for free, and so I'm excited to play with it. And they sent me both their 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and they're 80-20, that's a higher twist, but they actually look very, very similar. Um, and so I'm just curious on like a base level whether or not they look different. 
I did add some little like acrylic ties to one of them so that way I can tell them apart and I wrote that down somewhere so I don't remember which one has cut marker on it at the moment. Um, but the, that is what is pre-soaking sort of up. Nope, up there. <laughs> and we're going to start with that um, as sort of a, it's, not, it's sort of like a swatch test. I guess the times that I've done this to sort of swatch different acid dye colors, those videos I don't think have been published yet. But I have probably like seven or eight colors that I'm considering playing around with here. And I want to use them in the dry form and layer them on top of one another. And so I wanted to just sort of play around with them all together, not in even proportions, but then sort of help me figure out what levels I want to use for each color. Um, clearly, I'm going to want a lot of orange. The two oranges I have are fluorescent safety orange, which I'm not going to use today, and tangelo, which, if I remember correctly, is a little bit on the red side, but we'll see sort of how this goes. I've only played with that a handful of times so far. So yeah, we'll we'll see like how, how this all looks and how it works. And we'll probably do at least two rounds of dyeing through my steam pan. And oh, I can close that. Oh, what did I let slip? Um, yes, the fox, pics, the fox picture is still up there. Um, I'll be removing it eventually, but once I get like started in the pan, I'm just leaving it up um, for a little bit. Um, okay, I'm glad to see that Tangelo gives you a great orange. Um, I mean, it looked, it was, I'm not sure if it's the, the orange that I want, but I also have yellow around if I need to like add some of that. Um, yeah, the times I've used it, it seemed like almost, yeah, it, it seemed reddish, but it also could have just been at a higher level, um, like a higher concentration. So I'm going to play around and see. Um, oh, fun. Yeah, the tweed, the tweed is going to be really, really cute. Um, yeah, so we'll get started. I guess, so my first impressions of the... Um, dyer supplier yarns are that they are extremely soft, but they look like they've been a little stretched out. So stroll definitely like looks fluffier um, than the other ones right now, but I'm not sure if they'll like sort of plump up and bloom a bit in the dye bath or when I put it through my new uh, Nina Soft Spin Dryer at the end, which helps yarns be nice and fluffy after drying. So yeah, so we'll, we'll see, um, but I expect that they'll die beautifully, um, but I was just a little surprised because the, they seem a little different than the similar yarn bases that I've received in knit crates. I know they have a new, um, that Dyer Supplier has a new supplier um, for, for the yarn bases, so I'm just like curious, but I'm sure that it'll be beautiful. What did I let slip? Oh, I said the wrong name. <laughs> I said the wrong name of where the other bear yarns came from. So let's flip the camera and I'm gonna remove Foxy. You should name him or her. I'm not sure if it is a male or female fox. Um, I will need to pull the photo back up at some point because I'm going to need to see it because <laughs> I will need to sort of see my inspiration. But all right, so what colors do I have pulled? So right now I have mostly Derma acid dyes. Um, I have the colors Tangelo, Brilliant Yellow, Espresso Bean, which is sort of purpley, Toner Black, which has some red and yellow sort of flux in it. Um, I've got silver gray, forest green, and twilight gray, which I think is also a bit purpley um, compared to um, sort of the other grays. And then I also have jacquard acid dye in the color brown, which is a true brown, unlike the others. Okay, let's make sure I have one of these with 
the tie. So we've got one skein with a tie, and let me see. Um, this is the 75-25. And then let's grab one without a tie. Which should be the 80-20. And that has no tie. So with this tie, I just literally onto one of the ties of the skein added this piece of acrylic yarn. So that way I could tell the difference. Um, now, in addition, oh, okay, which is it this one? I'm trying to look for the other one. There it is. Okay. Since I have it tagged, I may as well use this one too. I have an additional skein of yarn right here that is damp. Um, this is another of the Dyer Supplier 7525. And I'm going to use this to wipe my fingers. Um, this is not pre-soaked in any acid, just tap water. But at the end, I'll add this to an acidic bath and then we'll see like what we get. But so this is sort of like my leave no dye behind curiosity that's just sort of hanging out there. Um, I have two more zip ties to use on these two skeins. These are nylon zip ties, so you can see that they do take up some color, um, but it, I haven't noticed that color coming off of them yet, so it means that they're nice and reusable. All right, let's add Good. Let's add about four cups of water and let's go ahead and do two tablespoons of white vinegar. My tap water does run slightly acidic, um, so at this concentration it should um, at this concentration, things should start striking fairly quickly. It's funny, I think that the skeins are um, a bit longer than some that picks ones, but it's funny is that like, it's not sort of spreading um, out quite as much. I'm trying to decide. I do think I want a tiny bit more water. Um, I'm not going, like the yarn in my head that I'm going for probably will have some speckles in it, uh, but it's not going to be necessarily like, I don't need that low immersion. So let's see. I just added another two cups of water bring it up to about six and the yarn was totally saturated when I added it. So the way it is right now, there is yarn that is sort of at the surface and then a lot that's below the surface. So colors should spread out a bit as we play with them. But, okay, and I'm turning on the heat and there's still, okay, so we've got six cups of water and two tablespoons of white vinegar. <laughs> and so six. Oh, Suzanne, thank you so, so much for the super chat. Um, thank you. I missed it because I was over at the dye pot. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. Um, I want a brown or orange, you can tone it with the green and black. Yes, so that's one of the reasons why I pulled some of these purples and some of these colors is I think that I could shift the orange and okay, I have no idea why the camera is like blinking. Has it been doing that the whole time? Um, Huh. Oh, so you've seen some color transfer with your zip ties. 
yeah, I'm sure that it could happen. So you keep the darker stained tines with dark colors and light with light. Um, whoops, yes, that definitely makes sense. Let me, I think it was trying to focus a little bit on my microwave, <laughs> which is not what we want. Um, okay, oh, so it just started doing that. Okay, that's good to know. Um, hopefully that will, uh, like, okay, we're getting nice and hot. Um, right now I have this dedicated dice steam pan on top of two burners on my stove. Um, so there's like a burner here, a burner there, which means that the heat isn't exactly even throughout, but I find that this setup works really, really well for dyeing. Um, oh, <laughs> and I left this camera on. Um, Leslie Rogers, thank Oops. Leslie Rogers, thank you so so much for the super chat. Um, and if any, why am I there? You go. <laughs> and if any of you are wondering what these brightly colored boxes are, um, there is a little dollar sign at the bottom of the chat window, which is for super chats, and it's sort of like. I consider it like a tip jar. And so if you enjoy Kenneth's content and want to contribute to it, um, then yeah, that's one way to do it. But I'll talk about other ways that you can support all things Kenneth throughout the video. Um, yes, it did start simmering a little bit. I just turned down the heat. In general, I try to stay like below a boil, but I tend to be a little naughty. And it ends up sort of like at or above a boil sometimes. All right, now before we get started playing with the dyes, let's talk about some personal safety equipment. Um, since I'm gonna be using acid dye powders, um, when I'm dealing with the jars and have open powders around, I will be wearing a respirator mask um, and safety goggles um, just to make sure I don't inhale anything. While I have the equipment, and I'll be wearing gloves. While I have this equipment on, I will try to speak slower because it will muffle my voice. Um, and so I wanna make sure that you guys will be able to hear me. Um, yeah, but sometimes, um, I don't think I have a link to this, um, this the mask on this video. Um, I got it from Dharma Trading Company and I have also used their just face masks and have really liked those as well. And so feel free, um, if you guys have any questions while I am dying, um, feel free to leave them in the chat. But when you see my head pop back up, that's when I can see the chat messages again. I won't be able to see any messages while I am at the dye pump. And now I am all muffled. It probably also doesn't help that my microphone is behind me while I am at the over here. And so, but I will try to check in on the chat from time to time. Do, do, do. Okay, uh, I really should get like a tablet or something and bring it to a microwave so that way I can read chats while I am at the stove. That would probably make sense. Okay, let's start. Some of these colors I'll probably pop just like pop a bit, a bit in with the back of a spoon. But for the one that I think is our star today from Jello. Um, let's go in. Hmm. Yeah, it looks really, really red to me. Like, I mean, I think this is the color that I used for the coral last week. Hmm. Yeah, that is looking, maybe they sent me the wrong color or something because this is not quite, oh funny, that did, 
and flex some of my men. I feel like spread it in the lab. And now I'm taking my hand on this pan and sort of just wiping it on there. Um, when I'm going into the jars directly, I will oh, wash my hands in between colors. So that way I don't contaminate any jars. Or by washing and by washing my hands, I mean washing my gloves. But, hmm. Yeah, that's looking really, really red to me. I'm not sure what you guys will see on camera, but I'm sort of popping over to see. Yeah. It's looking a little red on camera, too. Let's try. Let's try layering on a hint of the brilliant yellow, which I haven't used in speckles like this before. So this kind of technique. I plan to go heavier on the other colorway. I just sort of wanted to see like what will happen if I layer these. I might end up needing to like mix something. But Here's just some of that yellow a little heavier. Oh, that was a good sign. Yeah, color-wise, this is not doing what I want. So I'm definitely going to have to think about how I need to layer these colors. Um, Hmm. I mean, I might need to go pull out the fluorescent safety orange after all and sort of bring that. Okay, I guess that the yellow is helping a bit. I do need to deepen it. Um, where is here's my little spoon? This is a big chunk of yellow. Oh goodness, that is chunk. Okay, I'm going to add it to, to my little knot yarn over here because that's just like a really good chunk. Um, you know, none of the yellow does make it look a little mustardy. It's just all a bit brighter than, than I wanted. But this is why I'm starting sort of at this level right here. Versus starting at, um, versus just sort of going for it on the other yarn pieces to try to figure out what works. But yeah, I might end up wanting to start with the fluorescent safety orange and get that brightness, and then go on with some of these other other tones. Because right here, I'm gonna swatch out some of these. So that is espresso bean. Then let's do. I'm doing the color, some of these colors that I'm less familiar with. This is twilight gray. Curious at the difference between those. Yeah, so the twilight gray is definitely like purpley. Um, and this is the espresso bean, which is sort of like a deeper purple, which I wonder. Okay, that's sort of like brownish. Let's see. Okay. Hmm. I'm really going to have to think about this. I mean, this is, so I know this is looking like a little bit like a hot mess right now, but I promise I do have a plan. Okay, I know black and silver gray and brown do. Let me find my fluorescent safety orange. Here we are. Okay, 
because it's bright, but it is an orange. That is sort of where I want to start. I really like it's like it's looking okay this one now it's looking a little more orange but isn't it weird that this like neon orange is sort of i'm liking better than tangelo and on the color card you would think that i might want the opposite um yeah i'm thinking that that I mean, I will use some of the tangelo with it, but I'm thinking that that, ironically, is sort of the spot where I want to start. But, all right, so where do we go from this hot mess? Um, well, and even, okay, I'm taking off the mask for a minute. Um, my gloves are super, super sweaty. Uh, let me come over. Yeah, so even the, on camera, the fluorescent safety orange is looking fairly red. Um, but it does have more of that burnt orange feel. And so I feel like that I would have an easier time darkening that up, especially when layering the colors together, than I would have sort of making the tangelo feel more orange. Um, yeah, the colors, the colors on the screen are a little better than normal, but, uh, it definitely to me, um, it's, I, I agree. It's looking a little pink on the screen. There's definitely more yellow in there than there is sort of down here. Um, but I think that I'll be ending up using a lot more of the, the yellow than I thought already. Um, can I mix two colors together before I sprinkle them on? Yes, definitely. And so that's sort of what I'm playing around with. Um, and I wish the videos had come out with the sort of like thing that I'm going for with the way I layer colors. I wish, I really wish I had an orange that was like perfect already for the way I want to play with this. But um, I think that it'll be pretty, pretty fun. Um, yes. And so the sound is muffled because I am wearing... A respirator. Um, so, respirator is Charlie Brown's teacher. Yeah. All right. Let's go and play with play with this some more. Oops. Let's put the mask on before the glasses. Um, oh, I guess I could show you guys. See, I'm like. It's kind of cool because it sort of put it on and then it clips behind the head. So it really does, and then you can like tighten it in the back. So it really does sort of like protect you everywhere. <laughs> and you can't even see me smile or frown. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's, let's, okay, I think I have, I'm starting to have a sense of what I want to do. Um, for the other yarn, but let's sort of have some fun over here now. The curious the yellow spread and the orange spread, which is a good thing for what I'm going for today. Yeah, I think with some of the fluorescent, if I start with a lot of fluorescent safety orange and then add on tangelo, um, I'm curious how, and of course, as I'm coming over here, silver gray sort of speckled black because um, the pigments are like dark and sharp. So, like, the, the silver gray only really looks gray if you, like, put a lot on. Um, and then, 
sort of let it spread out, um, then you start to see sort of some of this gray. Otherwise, it can look pretty black. Um, let's see. I am, so someone asked in the comments if I could mix colors together before I add them on. And I think that that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to mix together. A little twilight gray. And a little bit of espresso bean. Together in a cup, and I am going to give this over a bit. So I am, yes, I am speckling, but I will be going through and pushing down so the speckles aren't going to be like super, super hard or anything like that. Um, But there's a reason why I'm sort of practicing before <laughs> um, going in. But now, if I bring my spoon over, um, you can see that I'm sort of letting these tones spread out a bit. So I could leave them where they were and let them sort of be speckles, but. It's funny, there's not a, really any purple in the inspiration photo, but I like the sort of brown that the purple on top of some of these oranges bring in. I actually like that a lot. Okay, here's some more fluorescent safety orange. And from some recent videos, you guys will know that this color, um, maybe at higher acids, it wouldn't, um, it would stay put more, but it will spread out a fair amount. Uh, okay. I like wiping my fingers on this waistband. Okay, and I'll close this up. And I have a feeling in the next one I will bring a little bit of green in, but I'm actually really liking this is a bit too yellow, I think, overall. But I'm liking the direction that this is heading. Because it's sort of drowning out, it's muddying up those purples a lot, um, which is sort of what I wanted. Um, and it's actually going, okay, I kind of like. Like, this is out of my comfort zone. These are not colors that I usually will play with. But I think that there's something fun. Okay, let me see. This is what happens when I make things up as I go along. Let me see what happens if I go in with, like, tiniest bits of green in some areas. wiping on my yarn. Mm -hmm. 
dealing with two different yarn bases. There's no question that we have two separate yarn bases here um, because, you know, that's just what we started with. But this is where it's a good reminder that even if we see two identical yarn bases, the colorways would not be identical, even with adding the same colors on each one, just because this is a very, like, random, random technique. Um, so let me make sure lids are secure. Okay. Sure yeah. I try to reuse gloves as much as I possibly can, but sometimes it is really, really hard when sometimes it's really, really hard to reuse the gloves. Oof. When um like if my hands start getting sweaty underneath there. And then I always, probably should have done this before I took the mask off, but at the end of the day, I always like take a wet paper towel and like wipe the floor um, just to sort of make sure I'm not seeing any um, like color spread or like particle spread, um, which just always makes me feel more comfortable and like I'll wipe down like I don't get the um filter part on the mask wet but I'll wipe down other parts of that at the very end just to sort of like check and see there is a little bit on the edge of the pan but otherwise we're pretty good um okay I'm actually like happy with how this is coming now um <laughs> yeah like it's it's different okay i think in person you don't see the orange that is there um but you know so the image we started with i'm not i'm not close to there i'm not sure how close i'm going to be able to get because my orange doesn't quite feel right but i i'm going to try <laughs> with what i have to get there. So let's see. Um, yes, it's a lot. It's think more to me. Um, think more like watercolors and less like markers. Interesting. Yeah, that's what um, I have to think about the ways that the colors like blend together in the pan. I wish that the colors were showing up a little more clear. Um, so, so far, all of the dyes that I've used are Dharma acid dyes. Um, I have been playing with Twilight um, Tangelo and Fluorescent Safety Orange, some Brilliant Yellow, some Forest Green, and some Espresso Bean and Twilight Gray. Oh, I think there's a little bit of Silver Gray in there too. So I'm sort of just pulling from these shades. Um, do I think mixed dye and spray mister will, will create speckles? Maybe. Um, it depends on how scattered the spray is, because if you think about sort of the way a spray bottle goes, a lot of times like in the center, you'll have a big blob and then some speckles around the outside. So you could definitely get some speckles, but you might also get some larger patches of color. Um, yeah, the one um, jacquard color that I pulled out is uh, brown. I didn't even set a timer. Um, I'll go over and flip things in just a moment. Um, yeah, so in person, now that I've got the fox up again, I'm gonna try to look. Um, in person, let's see if this works. I take a picture on my phone. Oh, come on, my phone has been acting up like really, really badly. Um, but 
even that is not yellow, like, it's not yellow, quite yellow enough. Um, there we go. Maybe that. I'm going to share, um, I'm going to share this to my Instagram story so that way you guys can see, um, that way you guys can see what the colors look a more like in person. I can't correct the color on my webcams as well as I would like. Um, not live. Um, so if you go, I just at Chemnitz on Instagram. So if you go over there, the color should be, um, and I'm at, adding it to my Facebook story as well. It should be there now. I mean, not that, yeah, not that the, the double camera thing works, but um, you can see it over there, and uh, that should give you a better sense of the colors. The colors are much more yellow than than they look and um because the fox is transmitted as the fox image and not going through the webcam that's why it's not as good um but yeah i'm gonna go and flip the yarn and so yeah, I'm a, I will say I'm excited with how this is this one is going. I am far from my inspiration because I think with this technique it's hard to get like it's a saturated orange and I think it would be a little easier for me to get that layering liquid colors than trying with the dry powders. But we'll see where we get. <laughs> We'll see where we end up. Okay, let's flip these. This is why I love these zip ties, especially around the ties. I want to try to make sure I can like show off as much of the areas that have white in them as I possibly can. Um, that's where I want to add the most color but I will say I yeah I had my misgivings here I really wish that Tangelo gave me like a nice orange <laughs> um it's just it keeps reading either red or pink to me um which is a little bit of a bummer Oh, there's some dye right there on my counter. Um, yes, the white balance on my webcam is awful. Um, it's something that I struggle with because if I shift it, um, the problem is that the camera doesn't pick up reds well. Um, and so... Um, yeah, I, it's something that I just, I struggle with. Um, and I think I need to figure out some other kind of streaming software. But yeah, this is one big reason why after I do live streams, I always do recaps as well, because it just ends up um, pretty different. Where are my paper towels? Do I have any over here? Yes. We're getting a new set of dedicated dye paper towels. Um, yeah, the yeah, there's a limit. Like on my camera, I can go and add like. If I feel like that the reds aren't showing up, I can shift the white balance and then add, say, magenta back in. Um, and I don't have that level of color correction control on the webcam. Let me see 
Hi guys. <laughs> I'm going to make myself tiny, but that way you guys know I am here. Um, let me see if I can... Uh, which one are you? It's not the laptop. I want the video. There we go. Settings. Actually, that is a little better. Maybe. Um, it's still not really picking up the greens, but we'll try that. Um, so the cameras I use are Logitech um, cameras, which probably have the ability to do what I need it to do, but it's a little better. Um, the the problem is that so I use OBS for streaming um, and so yeah hopefully like I was able to fix the white balance there but I yeah I one of the problems is that when I'm doing this myself sometimes the, the colors look fine and then I don't notice how bad it is until I am like I come back and check, and then I realize like, oh crap, I need to try to uh, adjust this, but I'm live, and so then that makes things hard. Okay, back to Charlie Brown. Okay, I am going to, hmm. Okay, let's go into this is Spessa Bean, and there is uh, the Twilight Gray. Here is our fluorescent safety orange. And so, again, like it looks like I'm speckling, and there will end up being some speckles with this technique. But it's really more when I'm going towards more of a layered color look. So at intervals, I do sort of mix these colors in. And this is actually a technique that I have really, really gotten into lately. Uh, okay. And now I'm not cleaning my hands. Yeah, but I'm going into this mix that I have of espresso bean and twilight gray. So now there's going to be a tiny bit of orange in there. And so that's giving us some of those like browns. Okay. And then I do have my lovely yarn mop, hand mop over here. And this is where I'm going and wiping my hands at random intervals. So at random. Sorry, those intervals aren't exactly random. They are just like when I want to change colors. And so before, just like rinsing the dye down the sink, I'm just putting the dye on that clean of yarn. And now we're going to help these colors spread, I'm giving them some access to water. So if you wanted the speckles to stay as speckles and to not spread out like I'm doing right now, then you could just wait and not sort of try to submerge them a bit. And then they will strike. But, yeah, okay, I think I'm going to add a little bit of 
and Zillow. <laughs> Making sure things are closed up. So I have no idea what I'm going to do when I pull out these other skeins yet. haven't quite thought that far ahead. So sometimes I can go, this is a great example of how sometimes I can go for th something and just nail it. <laughs> and other times, not so much. So here's some brilliant yellow. I'm just doing a tinge. My uh, yarn mop is looking quite yellow. I think because, uh, like in a more in a lighter form, some of these oranges look more yellow as well. Okay, and then finally. <laughs> Where is my forest room? Oh shoot. I haven't gone through and pressed down yet. I'm trying to do this with my left hand. <laughs> I think with this colorway, if I said that I was going for something Halloween-y, uh, you guys would all be like, oh yeah, totally. Uh, so I'm now, now I see some like lighter areas. That's sort of where I am putting the green. I need to think if I'm going to go in with the gray. But I've, as I said, I've really, really been enjoying playing around with this, uh, this way of just layering these colors together and sort of seeing the way that they interact. I'm doing it in this semi-speckled kind of way but by letting the colors also spread out a little more. Maybe I went a little heavier with some of the grains this time. And like in some of the other ones, like I'd add colors and not even let it set completely. I'd flip it, you know? Uh, I think I will add da -da -da, a tiny bit of the silver gray. I find like um, if I try speckling, with the silver gray, uh, you get sort of like black <laughs> speckles. You don't really get like pale gray. Uh, I can't even like see it yet. <laughs> like it's there, I promise. I promise I added some color. Um, <laughs> Okay, let's give this a couple minutes and then see 
see. Like I I like this. I can sort of see how this came from my inspiration. Sort of. Um, let's give this five minutes. Oh, it's nice to be able to talk and breathe. I'll come back to the computer to see questions in just a second. Um, I'm just checking to see. Oh, good. See, I just wiped the floor and like, there's nothing down there. <laughs> right by the stove. Because I just work like, it sort of helps me get a sense of like, if the, like, if any of the powders are like springing into the air or anything like that. Um, ah! Oh, Keith, you're watching? <laughs> um, here's the inspiration photo. I'm gonna pull it back up. Thank you, Keith, for dropping in the the link. Um, yeah, like I'm not like nailing. Like last month, I felt like ooh, I nailed those colors. And some other months, I felt like I've nailed the hue. And I think that without the appropriate orange. Um, with this technique, like I could, with the colors I have, I could mix an orange that feels like that one. But I think that with the colors that I have doing, just getting speckles that color or something would be a little hard. Um, looks like Tim's spaghetti and tomato sauce. I'm making you guys hungry. Oh no, moldy lasagna. <sighs> oh gosh, you guys are hilarious. Okay. I am, um, while we're letting this sit, I'm going to go take a quick water break. Um, and I, so I'm going to send you guys to a brief commercial break. Not everyone will necessarily see them, um, but then I will be back. Uh, and if you don't see an ad, don't worry. Uh, YouTube determines how they do it. really like this. This is not quite what I was going for, but okay. um, shoot, what was I coming over here for? Um, if you're not at a commercial break and you get to hear me think out loud, that's pretty fun. Um, I don't even remember what I was going to go do. Uh, <laughs> oh dear, um, oh dear, yeah, what was I gonna, oh, I know what I was gonna look for, I was looking for my color chart, I have that anywhere nearby. That was what I wanted. Okay, I'm gonna make myself nice and big and a little foxy. You can go nice and small. Okay, so here is a colors chart of all of the Dharma acid dyes. And I think, I mean, like if I look at Tangelo, which is right there, it is sort of like a pinkish orange. So it sort of seems to reason when I'm seeing it a bit more red. I think that saffron spice um if i'm looking at here so color number 460 um that is probably the one that i would have wanted to be playing with um and maybe a little bit of golden poppy which is sort of like a nice gold color um and yeah i think some of the color maybe like fawn uh would be like a nice brown to layer in with it um so i definitely need like another patch of colors ordered and so having these colors and then doing these this little bit of swatching and stuff 
like I've been doing, um, get, helps me get a feel for them. Like espresso is very purple. When it's really, really pigmented, then it starts to look brown, but it's a purple. And when it, where's Twilight Gray? I wish that this was organized. Twilight Gray is very blue, which I guess on actually on camera it looks blue now, but in person, it's sometimes hard, like when you're just looking at a poster or looking online, to uh, get a sense of, to get a sense of, um, to get a sense of some of the undertones that you actually see when you layer these with white yarn. Um, and so, and the, the colors, sorry, the colors are, uh, on the color chart are ones that you get from dyeing silk, not wool, which is another reason, I guess, to take this with a sort of a grain of salt. But by, and I forget when these videos are coming out, I think in the next few weeks, um, when I've done these, like the first time playing with some of these colors, the thing that's helped me with the most is that now I can look at that and be like, okay, looking in person and looking at the color chart, I see why the espresso bean is looking purple. Um, pecan brown and teddy bear brown are more on the brown side of that color. And so looking at them relative to one another that way really, really helps um, if that makes any kinds of sense. Okay, let's, oh! oh. And this is why we got to flip multiple times because we've been having some pretty good color penetration, but there's nothing wrong with some white patches, but sometimes that's just not what you want. Um, and things are cool enough that, okay, I can kind of try to spread out some of these regions where we want a little more color. And I think um, I'm probably going to focus probably on the orange and then like a hint of those like extras that I had. Um, I do need to get kitted back up. I think it's also fun for you to see what a hot mess this looked like when I was swatching. And hopefully you guys now think it's a little less of a hot mess. Uh, hopefully. Here's my R. Safety orange. some colors on top of it too because it's looking uh, a little random. Oh shoot, I could have gone, I forgot that I could have gone straight the orange into this mixture. Um, yeah, for the next one, I'm probably going to layer the colors Let's do some hints here. And then go with, ah, I'm going to use this fish turner. This is another wonderful tool for helping some of these colors spread out. Mm. 
but still some lighter patches. Over there. Okay, let's see. I get asked a lot why I don't, um, why I like to use my fingers, and I really, really like the tactile feeling of the process. So again, if I had left it, I would probably end up with some more sharper speckles, but um, I don't mind there being some speckles, but the, the look overall is this more layered feel. And I do want to show off, even though on this one, none of the colors at all are set. Here is just the yarn mop um, where I've been wetting my hands. And honestly, I'm tempted to go ahead and flip and sort of do some color check. Like you can see, I've got my hands I've really got my hands in here. Um, now, I might add And I might let some of these stick as speckles just to give a little dimension. So maybe that's what I'll end up doing with the other one. Just do orange and then sort of like speckle some of these other colors on it. <laughs> Forget the yarn mop. I can use my fingers. Um, <laughs> in here because this is really not that hot. Hmm. Right, the, heat, the heat was on the low. like it when I go through so many gloves, but I think that it's just the way that things are tonight. Okay, I'll turn it back low. I'll let this go. I'm going to turn up for 10 minutes. I don't think I even need that long. Mm -hmm. Let's do. Right. Let me give this, I think, a good, whew, good ten minutes. I really like this, like a lot. Um, but I, it's funny, I have trouble like. Stopping, if that makes any sense. Uh, I really, really like where this color ended up. Oh, hello, Indy. You want to go find Daddy? I know. Fine, you want to say hi? Okay, go get daddy. Go upstairs. Shoo shoo. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not gonna feed you. I think you already ate. 
Go get down. Go to the third floor. Go, go. <laughs> You're my good boy. Um, it looks like rust. Yeah, there's a lot of rust color in there. Um, <laughs> thanks for reminding me that I was getting water then. Um, yeah, he's he's a sweet, sweet boy. So, yeah, the, the colors are all brighter. I think that, like, it almost could get glazed in something. But, you know, I went for it kind of missed it a little bit, but I'm ending up with something beautiful that I probably wouldn't have gotten if I hadn't been looking at this picture. And this is why the dialogue is fun because it's getting me to play with color um, in a different way. Hey, Keith, why don't you call him? Oh, he's already eaten? Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, and he's gooped. He's got his tick medicine on. Now I need to go wash my hands again. Indy, I love you, but go get daddy. Go. Go get daddy. Um, so <laughs> color theory is my weakness. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to start trying to do this. Um, I could do, and I think in the next, when I do the next set, I will probably play a little more with some of the orange some orange and brown um but i like in my head and this these skeins that i did right here oh why is there okay i guess i really didn't reset it um the skeins that i did right here were sort of to test the tones of that some of these colors for me to figure out what I wanted to put together. So I think that, you know, the Tangelo didn't quite work right. As much as I want, I'm like I knew that the Twilight Gray and Espresso weren't quite brown or gray, I wanted to try to see. And so I do like, uh, yeah, and the green is, even the green is a little bright. Like everything needs to be a little bit desaturated. And I think that, uh, the tones quite aren't quite right to give me that. Um, I'm looking here and like I wish that. Uh, oh, what is what is say? Uh, yeah. So yeah, color theory is not my strong point, and so the only way I learn is by trying, and so that's what I'm doing today. <laughs> if that makes any any sense, I hope it does. Um, because that is what I am going for. Um, but yeah, to, you know, not everything is like a perfect kind of win, but I do really like this. And I think that if like I were to call this color woodland creature or fox in the woods or something, um, people would see that and people would understand that that's where I was coming from. So I consider that part to be a win. Let's, you can see like we've got all this color on here. Um, yeah, just sort of flipping it one more time. And the last time you can see we do have um, some speckles in here. Actually, you know, all of these together, I am getting a bit of that orange, I think. So one of the reasons why I wanted some blue is that I needed a brown or orange, an orange that was a little less bright. And so that's one reason why I sort of went for the purples, thinking that some of that yellow in there might tone, tone it down. Um, yeah, I mean, I can, I can see a fox in here. Okay, now... All right, there's still a tiny bit of color left in there. So, uh, actually maybe what I will do is pull this out. Still very saturated and a little warm. Probably should have used my tongs. Okay, and let's go. The yarn mop is gonna need like some other love, but there was no, oh goodness, and I don't even think there was no vinegar on here yet. You can see there's vinegar in the pan, so we're getting vinegar for the first time. 
in this yarn and I'm just sort of letting it soak up some of these colors. This is going to get, like, this one I don't consider done. This is going to have, like, something else layered with it at some point. But I am going to turn up the heat a bit um, just to sort of get this, this one started before I do the other colors. Um, but so here is, I guess, one of the results from me just wiping my fingers with the colors I was playing with. <laughs> and yeah, I'm very curious to see what you guys think of this like random, random friend. Um, maybe glaze with brown. The fox is a complicated orange. You need to tone it using something else to get the nuance of it. Yeah, it sure is. Um, <laughs> oh, like that's an orange that like I want, but even like, even with this technique of using powders, the other like big thing to note is that, um, the other big thing to note about using that, um, is that if you have a color that's a certain tone, if you try to speckle with it, it'll probably be a lot different like I don't think you can speckle with like a sky pale blue because the pigments um, they might be paler um, but yeah it just doesn't quite work that way um, yeah we're getting hot so I know like I, I can handle a little bit of heat and stuff but in general pay attention uh, to the temperature and don't just go sticking your hands in without like testing it first. <laughs> I feel like I need to add some like disclaimers to my wildness sometimes. Okay, I am going to take this out. There's still a tiny bit of color left in there. I'm still planning on using this as like a nice mop. Um, now there is some acid and some heat in it for our, when I am playing, whatever I'm playing with next. Um, but I think, so I think that the orange that I want is the fluorescent safety orange. And I might just try going for, whew, I think I might do some of these purples and then maybe go for a little bit of gray. I could change techniques. Um, I could change techniques and I could start going for, um, I could change techniques and I could do this more with liquid dyes, but I'm a little committed. And so here's another two cups of water. Oh, I think there's some dye along the sides. I just look low. Um, that was two cups and now I'm adding another four cups it's okay that there's a little orange in there and is there soap on my nozzle well <laughs> it is what it is um and let's add, so I added six cups of water. Let's go ahead and add one, two, three tablespoons of white vinegar. Um, I will say for these first colors that we did, um, using the dyer supplier colors um, or dyer supplier yarn bases, I'm very happy with the way they absorb the color. It felt very, very similar to Stroll for me. Um, and hi, I'm glad you made the live too. Hi guys. I'm glad so many of you are now joining the one in the bath. That's more carnival colors. Yeah. That's the, like the, the mop and oh yeah. Um, I am having a flash sale in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. I just dropped a link into the chat. Um, so for the next about 24 hours, everything um, all ready to ship yarns are about 10% off. 
um, or not about, a coupon will give you 10% off all of the ready to ship yarns in my shop. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the yarns that we're going to use this time. And I don't know why I really, really like adding <laughs> a bunch of yarns that don't, that are of different bases, different fiber contents to one pan. Um, this is something that I've been really, really into lately, um, sort of like side by side. And so if you were going to add dip dye to different yarn bases at the same time, uh, if you were to dip dye them in a dye pot, you would get like one might absorb more color than the other. But in a low immersion setting, you can actually, um, you can get more like coverage on ones that might absorb, otherwise absorb colors slower. And so I just think that there's something really, really fun about that. The three Knit Picks yarn bases I'm using now are Stroll. Um, we've got Stroll um, right here. We've got um, Woodland Tweed, which is the new to me yarn base and is non superwash. <laughs> and then we've got Big O and Dove Heather, which of all of them, you know, maybe the way to go would be to, you know, instead of trying to glaze the yarn with a color, um, maybe the way to go is to start with um, something less white, um, something less white to begin with. Maybe that's a way to go um, to sort of achieve the look that, that I want in the end. So, yeah, I think that this will actually be really, really fun. And I definitely don't play with orange nearly, nearly, nearly enough. Um, nearly enough at all. I'm going to reduce the heat. I'm going to come chat with you guys before we get started. Um, I know that some of you just tuned in today um, for the March uh, Chemnitz Dialong. We are looking at this fox playing with oranges and browns and maybe a hint of green and gray um, and seeing where we end up. Um, I chose a technique that maybe was not the best one for achieving these colors. I think it would have been better for me to mix colors for, like in liquid form versus trying to mix them on the yarn. But we're seeing where we're going and certainly the first sort of attempts um, of playing with these colors, I got something that does feel foxy. Um, and yes, remember to hit the like, bu the like button and make sure you're subscribed to the Cabinet Tutorials YouTube channel. Um, and there's a little bell icon so you don't miss a live stream or anything like that. And yeah, I think that you know, we have a lot of fun over here. Uh, if you're a big fan of Chemnitz and you want to support us on another level, there's a few things that you can do. Uh, you can become a Chemnitz patron where you can get early access to a new yarn dyeing video every month, um, behind the scenes sneak peeks, and more. You also get advanced notice of Etsy shop restocks and so when I release pre-sales for the, I guess I'm saying the name now, for the, um, well, maybe I'm not, for the summer special, I'm going to do a summer, summer special sampler. And then when I release pre-sales, um, I'll let patrons know that those have gone up first. And so you get notice for things like that. Um, and one other way is there's the little super chat. It's kind of like a tip jar. And all of this goes back into more yarn and dye and supplies. <laughs> um, I just placed a big uh, wool to dye for order. I think this is my first wholesale order that I've ever placed with them. I'm not giving up on nitpicks in any stretch. Um, I'm in, not just because I'm a nitpicks affiliate, but I love nitpicks yarns like a lot. Um, but I. Uh, Wool to Die For has a lot more sock blank options and mini skein options. And they also have a wider range of some fiber types. So I've got some BFL samples coming in that I'm really excited to play with. The fox should be named Lady. That's what we named our car. <laughs> I am a huge, huge fan of Lady and the Tramp. All right. Let's, let's go for this. Um, what's funny is that wet, the stroll is, you know, white, 
the woodland tweed feels like a pale gray and then obviously the big o started off as dove heather so it was already a heathered gray um, and actually i'm getting I'm putting on my safety equipment so i need to go back in the powders but um, actually, for the recap video, I started off talking about the bare yarns this time because uh, since the colors were slightly different, I sort of wanted to have that on camera. But let's get started. And we're going to start with some all over fluorescent safety orange, which is funny when I'm going for such ultimately something that is such a muted uh orange or sort of like this foxy orange to be using this fluorescent neon color but you know it is it is sort of this is like an it is what it is kind of moment and this was the best orange that i had so here i sort of added it all over in this sort of speckly way but we aren't really just going for speckles today even though we could and that would be beautiful but i will be sort of poking this down to help the color spread and wiping my hands onto my now no longer quite as warm but vinegary yarn mop that's leave no dye behind and in between going into different colors or sort of taking a step back, I will be um, like rinsing off my gloves. Okay, but now, and so the thing with like, why didn't I mix up a dye stuff? Why am I, ooh, that with the gray is real nice. Uh, why am I doing it this way? And it's because I don't really want like an even color. I want this layered look and i really really enjoy with playing with colors in this way and so you can get some speckles but it's not like a heavy speckled and whoa that was definitely some pink i saw right there um, i'm using nylon zip ties there is an affiliate link to them in the video description but yeah, I think that you guys starting with the gray might be the like winner winner. Um, or even this woodland tweed. Yeah, I'm gonna know. I'm not even letting this sit for very long. I am gonna go ahead and flip these yarns, even though not everything has absorbed. Because I do want to start off with sort of this orange layer on everything before I add on and layer on different colors. And so I think on these two, you can really see how like this ends up going a bit yellow. I mean, this is a fluorescent safety orange. I do want to be careful with this middle friend because she will salt. Where did that pink come from? Possible there's some dye up on the sides. We need to make sure my hands are dry. Yeah, so I think that this time I'm going to do orange and then I'm going to try speckling with a bunch of different colors. Do I ever mix yarn bases in a single project? You're considering picking up a skein of shirt to play with, and I'm not sure. Um, I have, I definitely have in the past, and I think that if it, especially if you're doing something that you're not going to wash, I think that if for socks or something, you might want to stick to the similar base. But if you're going to do like a shawl or something, it would be really easy to mix. Um, I don't have a good source for uh, for bamboo yarns. This is fun. I would end up turning into a big mess. So one of the ways, and I showed it at the beginning, but one of the ways I keep from making a complete mess is that I put a shower curtain over my work, like on my counter. And then while I'm over there, 
like at the end, I will wipe that down. So that helps a lot. I'm probably gonna wash these, wait and wash these in the morning. Cause I have a feeling I will be going really pretty late. Good thing I'm still in California time. Uh, we just went to Legoland and came back on Sunday. So that's probably why I am still going strong right now. So right now where I'm adding this color, I am definitely above sort of the, the work area. And oh, it's funny. This isn't that warm, so I can just use my hands, which is kind of fun. Um, this is actually really, really fun. <laughs> yeah, so I'd say of all of these, the color is definitely the brightest on the stroll right now. And less bright on the other two. It's also, I would say, the least even. Oh, actually, I really like that. Really, really like that. I'm just sort of making sure I have, yeah, something that feels fairly orange overall. And with our superwash friends, the color isn't penetrating quite as deep as it is with the woodland one in the middle, which I seriously hope I don't felt. Um, but I'm going to do, I think, another round of orange on there. Oh, my goggles are getting steamy. <sighs> So yeah, please, if I miss a question um, when I come back to the computer because of like the chat and stuff, feel free to ask a second time. I don't get offended or anything like that. I, I consider these to also be like an ask me anything kind of thing. Um, I love to answer and help out and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. Probably, like I probably could go back in there, but I am going to do my tops. And if I added more water, these colors would spread further. All right, so now at this level, um, I would say that our stroll is starting to glow a bit. But the other two, there's definitely some unevenness going on there. The other two, it's funny what a difference like the, the base or can make to like tone down some of the color. Too bad, if I wanted to do gray, I would have to, like, too bad you can't just, like, speckle gray. But I could, ooh. This is just fun, and they look so, so, so different, which I always, always love. Oh, thank you. I love this comment. Wish there was a love button instead of just a thumbs up. Um, all you have is cotton yarn left. You're super curious if you can make it work and have the colors not come out dull or overly faded. Um, depends on the dyes that you have. Like fiber reactive dyes and stuff that's like more, I think like a higher quality than just um, <clears throat> something like a greater quality than uh, Susie, what's it? Sorry, I'm blinking. Then just 
Like cute tie-dye is great, but there's a limit to how saturated you can get it. So um, that's why you might want to consider like uh, a fiber reactive gel. Okay. Next, I'm going to go in with Tangella, which, well, I'm going to go in with multiple colors this time. Oops, that was a lot. And I'm starting some speckles now. Oh, that was a lot. I did not do that the way I did. But so I'm going in with Tangello, which is a, oh, I have to move things too. Oh well. Which is a, um, has a lot of orange in it, but it also just feels kind of red. And so, but unlike the fluorescent safety orange, this one is not uh, fluorescent. So I think this will just add, like, and I know that speckles do not show up quite as well on the big O, but I did want to play with this some. And I have a feeling colors are going to spread out a fair bit, so we're not necessarily going to see as many speckles on the whatever that one is either. The woodland. Okay. A lot less dye has gone down the sink. I've got this like mop friend next to me. If you're just tuning in, I have a skein of the um, dyer supplier 7525. So it's a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon yarn that I am just adding whatever dye is left on my fingers onto that yarn. Okay, so I could do... <sighs> okay, I am going to do some silver gray instead of the toner block. So I found with the silver gray that speckles end up looking rather black. Um, but they end up being a little more dispersed because I think that there's some kind of filler or something in there. So it's interesting to me. Okay, I, I guess it just took a little time to dissolve. So it's like I'm definitely seeing them over here. Um, I think at this stage I might. What's funny about doing some like speckles on a yarn with necks in it is that, yeah, I'm not sure like how I'm going to think about that in the end, but okay, I'm going to wait about a minute and then I think I'm going to press it down. Maybe two minutes. Let's do two minutes. And then we'll do, I think I'm going to do, well, we'll see where we're at after that. Hmm. So Rit does great, but Rit doesn't necessarily, um, what was I saying? Rit does not, doesn't know, sometimes it, it depends on how bright you want. Okay, I'm having trouble, like, making myself wait. Um, I love what the gray is doing here. It almost even feels green. Um, but like, I think I did in the most recent dye pop PS, I did some speckling with gray and I think I forgot. And I thought at one point in the, the video, I said I'd use black when going back, I realized that, oh no, it wasn't black. It was gray. It just looks like black. <laughs> so. Okay. 
So yeah, we're gonna layer on, but oof. This color right here is some of the closest of what I was going for. So I think that like dyeing like a pastel base color or even glazing after could help a lot. It's just easier to, I find it easier to go start from like white to go to pastel than to add like a low layer of color on top. Um, So now I am pushing it down. So we still have some speckles, but we're getting some spread, which is muting the color a little bit. Yeah, the one on this gray, that one's looking real good too. Okay. I think like, and so what's funny is that we're getting something that feels a lot like that, but we're using different colors. Um, I do want to use, okay, this is a mixture of Derma Espresso Brown and Twilight Gray. And I don't even know, certainly right now, this isn't showing up as like any different, but just doing like a little bit. It's hard to even tell where it is going on. But this could give some greenish hints. And I'm really just trying to pull up the tiniest amount. And that one I am going to leave um, sort of like speckly. But, oh gosh, I guess I, I bring the yarn mop over but I don't want to, it's sort of like leaking yellow, and I don't want to uh, bring that over there. But on top of the yellow, that mixture that I just did does look black. So there is that. Yeah, I would say that I like the color. This is still feeling really, really bright. But we'll see how it looks once it's flipped. Um, because I'm probably going to need to go through this progression a couple of times. Now, given that I'm sort of like speckling with all these different colors, I could just mix them all together. But I am enjoying sort of layering. Now I've gone into Jacquard Brown, which is really the only brown that I have. So if you're just tuning in, I did some all over orange and then like fluorescent safety orange to start with. And now I'm going through and adding these other tones and speckles of color on top. So we'll see how foxy this ends up looking, but I think that sort of these two are getting closer than the stroll. I'm really digging this yarn off. Okay. I am going to set a timer for five minutes. I'm going to reduce the heat a tiny bit and I'm just going to let all of this sit. <sighs> and let it all sit. And I'm going to come and check the chat and see if there's any questions.
Yeah, so I think I definitely changed the technique because I, I thought I would do going into this is I thought I would do sort of like the or big patches of color and the orange sort of like in patches and move it out and then do gray in separate patches and maybe brown in separate patches to have something slightly more variegated versus speckled. But the none of the oranges that I have in powder form are quite right for that. Um, and so things, now things are looking more orange in person. Um, let's see. Uh, maybe I should do, I'm going to see if I can get a picture and put it on, in, on my stories. Now that's not see, coming across, the, I guess it is a little bright. Uh, this is a little more yellow than, a little brighter than it really is. There we go. Nope. Like when, pro. Let me get my white balance the way I want it. That looks like crap. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Okay. Let's just see. Nope. It's like when I first look at it, it's like, ah, here's the color. And then it's like, there we go. You'll see my foot in that one, but that is actually pretty good. And I will share this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share what it's looking like from my end onto my Instagram stories. Um, and Facebook stories, so that way you guys can see um, a little like more closely what it's looking like. Um, okay, and I just added it onto my Facebook story as well. Um, so let's, yeah, so to give you guys sort of like the in real life, it's looking at, I think, a little brighter orange. It's a little like the picture that I just took is not perfect, um, but there is a little more dimension in there than I think is what's showing up on the webcam. So let's see. Uh, oh yes, let me thumbs up. Yes, I really, I was really wanting to play with, excuse me, orange. Just sort of how I like was going in looking for this. And you know, I'm not, hitting the colors and all well, certainly on camera but I do think I'm coming up with something that I could call a woodland creature and people would say yeah yeah sure um the jacquard brown um so jacquard brown I don't think breaks well it definitely doesn't break like color right brown um so the reason why a lot of food colorings break is that there are only five well, there's technically six, but I think there's only five commonly used dye molecules in food coloring, at least in the United States. And so therefore, um, since they absorb at different to yarn at different rates, that's why you get a lot of really extreme breaking. With trying a bunch of these dyes, I've noticed that, okay, some of these colors break when speckling, like toner black has some red and yellow specks in it. Um, forest green has some apple green speckles in there. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to break when you dip dye it because that is really like seeing multiple colors in there when you're doing the speckles doesn't mean that they necessarily absorb at different rates. And so there's a lot more hues that exist in commercial dyes, but some definitely, definitely break. I just um, need to play around with more of them. It's looking at end of the day construction worker. Well, it is fluorescent and safety orange. Um, will it take long to dry? Um, not necessarily. It depend well, it depends on uh, if I wash everything tonight or not. But with my new, um, oh, I've got to go flip things. With my new um, Nina Soft Spin Dryer, um, that really makes things take about 24 hours to dry if I take the time to spin out all the water. Um, if I'm doing, yeah, if I just sort of like gently squeeze out the water, then it could take two to three days. But 
out of the spin dryer, you almost don't even need to have it over something that it could drip into. Um, so let's see. Well, I guess before I'm flipping, there is, it looks like there's a fair amount of color. By doing this, if there is the color on there, I'm letting it spread and tone down our fluorescent orange a bit. So we can check. Woohoo, check out that. There's definitely some color there. I do think I want to add, mm, add two cups of water. I'm going to add two cups of water with one tablespoon of white vinegar. I feel like my water level is getting a little bit low. Um, all right. about nearly as much color as I thought. It's funny is that there's like some pink left over. So not only do different dyes sort of absorb at different rates, but different blends also take up color at different rates. And I need to flip you. Let's see. I want the ties to all go the same direction. Yeah, there's definitely like a lot more sort of color down at the other end there. So the pan is a little crowded. I have no idea. There's some people that will dye four, they must use a lot more water, but they can get four skeins in a pan at a time. I don't know how. I think my sweet spot is probably two. But I'm also not one for like really far apart speckles. I kind of like dyeing them pretty heavy. Just overall, that's sort of what I end up liking. I think that if you wanted, um, um, if you, I think for me, if I wanted to get pretty dispersed speckles, I would take a lot of citric acid, mix in a little bit of dye and then use that for my speckling to really spread them out. But I would probably still use my fingers because that's sort of what I prefer. All right. Getting kitted back up. And let's start, okay, so I think the colors I did were tangelo, the silver gray, and some brown from Jacquard, and then my mixture of the like purpley gray and brown. Let's start with this silver gray. Oh, no, I'm in tangelo. I was like, why is it looking so red? <laughs> it's like, because we are red. We are red, Rebecca. <laughs> So yep, there are three different yarn bases, which I will talk about a lot more in the recap, but we've got three different yarn bases here um, that I'm using tonight. And three quite different, and they all started with slightly different undertones, which I think also sort of affects how um, these colors end up looking. But I will say my yarn mop is actually starting to look looking pretty good, I would say, from having all these random colors put on top of it. Not random, but the skein that I have over here for just sort of wiping off my fingers is looking like very fall different from these other ones but okay so now for some silver gray 
I think one of the things that's hard is that when when a guy is coming out so light with the silver gray, like you don't even really see it. So it's like, wait, did I even put anything on there? And then after a minute, it's like, oh yeah, there we are. But that's because I do believe that there is a fair amount of filler in it. Oh boy. There we are. Yeah, it just doesn't show up <laughs> right away. Because the particles are so pale until they get wet. So, okay, now this time I think I want to wait two minutes. So I'm going to wipe off on the wonderful urine mop. Um, if I wasn't going to wait these like two minutes um, before going into the other colors, um, then I would probably um, just have not bothered washing my hands and just gone straight to the next color. But since, um, since I am waiting, because I want to sort of like push this down and kiss some of these grays that to spread out. Uh, yeah, but I can check the questions, even if I can't touch anything. Let me see. Do you think a soft one could work low immersion? Okay, yes. Um, there's a Dipot PS. Uh, I've done a few different soft links to immersion. I don't remember the number that's in the 100s. I did a one pastel with um, some pastel liquid dyes. And then I did another one that was um, the dye pop PS. I used dye powder. So, yeah. And it's boom, 30 seconds left. And then I can go in with my lovely fish turner. Since I have different equipment for dedicated dye stuff and for cooking, um, all my dedicated, dedicated dye stuff here is like this blue that I got at Bed Bath and Beyond. And I really, really like it. So, oh, I can show. Here's my yarn mop. And then here are the like test ones we did at the very beginning, which I actually love, I'm loving a lot. Some of these speckles stay, but the thing with like pressing it down now is that it can allow some color to spread if it has not yet struck. But I think a lot of it probably has struck. But it just allows us to maybe tone down our fluorescent I did not think I was going to be using fluorescent orange today. I really did not. Okay. I'm now going to use first some brown, brown this time. Now, all of these colors that I'm doing sort of end up looking the same right now. Like, it's really hard for me to tell the difference between, like, on this orange, the brown and the gray, and oh dear. Okay, I definitely accidentally got my finger wet there. Have some, like, dry paste on here, so I'm going. I was not going to go into the yarn mop, but now I am because. color on the glove. Now I will dry for going into the mixture. It's so bad. I want all of the Dharma colors now so, so badly. 
Um, it's just dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Okay, so this is the mix of the like purpley and blue colors, which will likely look fairly brown on top of the orange, but as they spread out, hopefully they will also turn it down a little bit. I feel like the big O, which started off as gray, is like my best version of this so far. I am really, really happy with how that is going. We set a timer for five minutes, and I am going. So I don't know if I'd be able to get them back on easily or not. Ooh. Yeah, probably not. water from the pre-soak down there. Could have been reusing that instead of getting more water from the tap. And the look at my floor looks pretty good. In between dyeing, I always make sure to wipe down um, like all of my surface and like I clean everything because you know the place where the dye goes is like around the edge of the pan and stuff but like one of the edges of the pan is just above the floor and like, there's not dye there so that is good but that's why like um i do like to use um i clean frequently and it's why like i wear the respirator and stuff but yeah, I mean, stuff actually stays where I want it to go really, really well. Yeah, I think that um, if I were gonna do this on just a stroll again, I would start with, um, start with a gray base and then try it and but still I mean or honestly I would try mixing the color which I think I would have more luck mixing it than trying to do it like on the pan with layering colors but you know that's <laughs> why it's a learning process um yeah, the test pan, because so I started off doing some bigger patches of some of the colors to see how they work together. And then I layered them all on top of each other um, and then added like some hints of green, which I don't think I'm going to do in this one. The pan's a little crowded. I really, uh, I really, really, well, I just ordered a second pan today. The problem is the burner that I film on has two similarly sized burners. The other side has like the big burner and then a tiny burner. So it would be even less even over there, but yeah, we'll we'll see like what I can do. So that way I can do, especially in these live streams, so that way I can be working on more than one thing at once. Um, oh, that sounds so lovely. <laughs> um, but I am just having like a ton of fun, you guys. Um, and added, so I added some of this to my stories. Um, yeah, so if you wanna see like the test yarn and then the current yarn um, sort of in progress, you can go over to, I'm just at Chemnitz on Instagram, and then you can see that over there. Um, oh, of course I never think, and like if I do like my, like, oh dear, 
posing for the screenshot thing now, like that will really work if it's going to go like, <laughs> we'll see what it randomly picks. Um, but actually I can show you guys. So on there, my, yeah, so they're like, okay, so I'm sitting here and technically I have some dye in cups, but I'm not like touching it and there's no moving air. Um, so that is my bad. I need a new stove. <laughs> oh, I need, I need a studio. That's what I need. And I want to put like studio lights in so that way I can film and even like mount. Yeah. I, I have dreams, but it's a long, long way away. <laughs> um, I don't get me wrong. I love what I do. Um, but sharing space, um, and, oh God, just keep this watching now. Um, <laughs> sharing space with the kitchen, um, is just a lot harder because it means there's a lot more time, um, like resetting and putting in, trying to like move things and cleaning. And there would still be a lot of cleaning if it, if it, was, if it was a separate space, but yeah. All right. Let's now go in and push down. I'm really, really liking the way these are coming. I feel like, like I love the colors that I'm getting on the woodland one, but I feel like I probably should have, mm, I probably should have done a different technique on that yarn. Um, I don't think, I think the yarn is still going to be totally beautiful. I just feel like there might be, Ooh, that actually is really, really pretty. Um, this is, this one's really, really pretty just as is. And even with some areas with less color, I'm not, that one is feeling good. I'm liking that. And let's see the big O. I'm actually feeling pretty good here too. Like I'm not, it's funny. I feel like some of the, some of these yellows have bound, but not some of those reds over there. That is interesting. The stroll, how am I feeling? Actually, are there any, like, I'm actually like, oh, uh, see, sometimes you open it up and then you find, like, areas where um, you want something else going on if you catch my drift, but I'm not really finding that on the other two. Um, but even so, actually, like, I do like it a lot. I do want to add, let's add, like, a bunch of vinegar. One, two, three. I want those to like absorb the rest of that color. And uh, this is the problem with doing powders. There's a lot of just like back and forth and wet and dry. Um, just pop my respirator back on. this five minutes that time funnily that time feels purple to me on there um, it didn't really feel that purple previously um, I still have, I think I have one more, yeah, one more stain um, that is just completely bare. So I might, 
Um, if this color exhausts in not like a huge amount of time, I might um, do that with some of these leftover dyes that I've got. Because you know, leave no dye behind. Um, yeah, I'm really, really happy with these. So there's definitely an element that's similar with my like color swatch test scheme. Thanks. Oh dear. And that one. Um, these have more green in them because I added green. And so the overall like feel of them is slightly different. But even the yarn mop scheme is looking really, really nice. I think I want more vinegar. added a ton of vinegar onto the two skeins that had some more color over there. Ah, and then coming back over. <laughs> um, thanks for joining. Uh, I could easily bring some lights for filming in the basement. Yes, I have a slab house. So the basement, yeah, we don't have a basement. Um, we do have like a finished third floor. There is not currently any plumbing up there. Um, so like in theory, that's, except that it's sort of a playroom. Um, in, like in theory, like if there was a space that we were gonna get, convert into something, that would probably be the one. But the way the room is, it's not like, like the room is like slanted on the side. So it would be a hard one to like convert into a studio. I have. The only reason I think why I would ever want to move, because I love my house, but the only reason why I would ever want to move would be so that way, like, there's a few things I wish we had here, like a full laundry room and not just a closet with a washer dryer, um, and like space to build out a studio. Like I could probably, there's no water in the garage. I could probably convert the garage. The, the problem for a lot of these things is that I film in addition to the dyeing. And I think that if I were just doing the yarn dyeing, then I could probably get away with doing a lot of stuff in my garage and converting that out. I know a lot of people do that for their studio, but I think it would be harder for me with the filming and like, I wouldn't want to leave like, well, streaming would be near impossible because I don't have as good uh, Wi-Fi out there, but also the, um, like I wouldn't want to just like leave the camera out there. There'd be a lot of like going back and forth inside. And so that it would just be a little harder. So, and I certainly like, I'm not at a stage where I could rent a, a space to use or anything like that. I'm very far from something like that. But if, um, yeah, like if over the next few years, if things grow, then who knows? Um, <laughs> So it's been, it's been a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, I don't know. I, I really, really enjoy these. I'm, so it's funny. I pulled this up before the Darla color chart. I really wish that they had organized this by color. <laughs> so like all the reds together, all the blues together. Um, yeah, I just wish it was by color because it would be a little easier to like compare all the browns that they were next to each other and stuff. Because looking at this, a lot of the things feel like extreme blue looks a lot like sapphire blue. And I could tell the difference between sapphire blue and peacock blue because um, they're close enough together. And so, uh, all right, goodbye face. Let's see how we are doing. I still see some pink. Ooh, some like nice purple. Okay, 
let's see how we are doing here. Oh, actually, well, that's not bad at all. That that's mostly mostly absorbed. Okay. Um, okay. These ones are cool, so I can set them. Like I don't like to set hot yarn in plastic bins. So here's the first ones that we did that actually are looking really really great. Okay. There's a little bit of color left in there which means that there will likely be some color um, bleeding when I rinse, but just sort of winding up some of the color. But I'm actually really happy with the color. And now let's add our, this is our yarn mop which I thought I should grab the tongs, that will be easier. Especially since I haven't put my gloves back on. Um, you can see some colors spread out. But actually like this, for me, just wiping my fingers on it, it's really not bad at all. Um, like there's a level of balance to it which is kind of nice. I'm hoping that if I give this some time, we get those colors to absorb. This is one of the yarn undo, no, this is one of the Dyer Supplier um, Bear Yarn bases that they sent me, um, that Rob from Knit Crate sent me for free so that way I could try it out. And yeah, I'm actually like, really liking this. The I used the two, um, I'm going to pump the heat a bit. I used two Dyer Supplier yarns um, at the very beginning too. And I am rinsing out this can because it definitely had some unbound dye. I use, I don't usually heat these thin um, reusable aluminum pans, but I do use them um, for cooling yarn a lot. Like that's my preferred sort of thing. But after I do have some powdered dyes left, and I have one skein of the Dyer Supplier 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, um, and so I will use that in a minute, but I'm going to sort of give this a good, let's like heat this up a fair amount and making sure all of my powders are, whoa, screwed shut. There we go. This actually ended up with a fair amount of color on it. Um, I'm very, very pleased. I wish that like these colors were exhausting, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, I think that, and this is one of the reasons why I'm excited to have a second pan. So when I remove the yarn from, when I remove the yarn from the pan, there's still probably at least a good half hour before it cools. Um, there's just, you know, it, cause it's, they're sort of like all together in a ball. So there is still some heat. Um, Um, I could cut out the squares to mix and match them, like you could even make magnets. Actually, um, my, the reason why I got the poster to begin with, I just haven't gotten around to it, was that um, Little Bean Loves Yarn, uh, Kayleen takes the poster and she cuts, um, like cuts a strip out of it and writes the color name on it and puts it on the top of the jar, which means if you have a box full of dye containers, you can look and see 
not only the name and the color that you're looking for, but also the hue. So then you can have like, if you have all the greens and blues in one box, you can like pick the color that you want from that. Uh, so um, yeah, that is definitely um, in, excuse me, in my plan. Huh. What's fun is that this is now looking a lot more brown. Like the yellow has dampened a bit. I'm not necessarily brown, but the yellow is looking more gold, maybe because it's absorbing some of these other tones. Um, Interesting. There's still two minutes left. I bet this is a situation where if I were to put a new bare one, there is a fair amount of dye in here. Um, so, okay. There's a minute and 50 seconds left, and then I'm going to do that last skein, use up all the leftover dye that I have. Um, yeah, I'm definitely not washing any of these until the morning. Um, because I've got to let things cool, but I can reduce this heat again. I could, so I've got these leftover dye powders and I could, um, I actually have a container where I've been saving a bunch of leftover colors that I'm planning to play with at some point. It's like a mystery color. Um, so I could save things and put them in there, but I'm not going to do that um, tonight. So the mop, yeah, I think because of the colors coming through, it's not, it's still more like of a gold yellow than an orange. Um, but right here on camera, it does look like that. Um, yep, I'm still alive. <laughs> This definitely will not be my longest live stream ever. I've done some pretty long ones. But actually, you're right. This is looking more like the color because I think it's like absorbed some of that other like leftover stuff. Wow, the irony if the one that gets the closest color wise is the like mop. <laughs> but there's still like there's still color in the pan um, and the timer is about to go off. Like in theory, what I should do with all these is leave them cool in the pan. But um, the, the only reason why I'm not doing that is because um, I'm on a live stream. But yeah, it's really pretty. So what have I done? Two. So I guess I'll be doing seven skeins tonight. Oh my. All right. So now I'm curious. There's a lot of vinegar in there and a lot of water. And so now I've got some of the, so this is the higher twist dyer supplier yarn. This one has nothing on it yet. And so let's just see how, if this just soaks up everything. Yeah, pretty much. So this is why, like, sometimes if you're having trouble getting, oh, I should have put a thing on it. Oh, well. I don't have another one in here. It's sometimes if you're having trouble getting, like, the rest of some colors to absorb, then you should just go ahead and try um, throwing another skein in there to just soak up that color. And you could even reuse it on multiple projects. But this color, like that amount of color isn't gonna add a lot to the other skein, but could be like a nice starting base for something else. Um, okay. <laughs> Getting kitted back up. I had the skin re soaking. Oh, 
I'm not gonna get up very easily in the morning. I'm still in California time. Okay, let's start with, this cup has some residual brown in it. Whoa! Wow, okay, to kind of brown breaks. Oh my gosh. Or at least there's something in here. It breaks into like blue and orange. Um, whoa, baby. Uh, so there was a question before about it breaking, and like I hadn't observed it on like a small scale, but oh man, right now. And I just rinsed out this cup. Colors are striking pretty fast. Okay. All right, and now I've got the real colors of doing. This is the, there's a lot of this one. This is leftover um, Twilight. Combination of Twilight Gray and uh, Espresso Bean. Okay. Yeah, and so we're seeing hints of like blue, and red and lots of purples and we are going to just layer this color on and on and on and i'm doing it in sort of a speckly kind of way but there's a lot of water in here a lot of acid and so we're just having some fun. Now, I don't have another yarn mop for me, so I will just go rinse my hands off. Yeah, both of those colors are fairly purple in their own ways. So if you're tuning in, this is no longer foxy, and I should make the foxy go away um, because we're just using enough of the colors. Oh, Margaret Siebert, thank you so, so much for the super chat. Thank you, thank you. Um, I love that the Aussies are awake. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret, so much. Oh. California could be awake now, too. It's, just, it's fairly late for my East Coast friends. So, yep, so basically what we'll be doing here is we'll be speckling on some color, let it sit for a minute, move it around, and repeat. <laughs> we have a fair amount of dye here. So we'll probably end up with something fairly tonal um but maybe it has some like speckling in there as well you know we'll see i'm just having some fun i really like this color purple like a lot too bad this is like that random mix of two colors 
really fun to add like rye powder on top of um, really fun to add the dry powders just like on top of the water and watch it like spread and sink in. Yeah, it's funny how like there's definite, definite breaking in here. You see like these hints of like red and blue in some places. The problem with like speckling with a color that breaks is that sometimes it can feel like a mistake. Um, even if it's not. Getting close. I am really, really liking what is going on with this whole thing. Um, I think the overall color, the overall color when I wash my hands, feels very wine-like. Um, that's what I'm sort of seeing in there. It looks very much like some kind of Merlot or something. But then there's more blue. Maybe the blue just dissolves after. I don't know. Look at that color. Um, I'm just not waiting very long at all. But I think that if I was like more patient, then we might like see some legit speckles. But I think instead we're headed more towards like a tonal moment, which I am a huge fan of. Tonal yarns are actually like my favorite to knit with. And I also really like just like randomly adding There, there we have it. There's a little guy left behind. Yeah, 
a little bit of dye was left behind, but overall, I would say almost everything made it onto yarn. This may have been like my one of my lowest waste days with like powders. Um, besides making stock solutions or something like that. Um, this is some deep satur- Oh, I love a saturated moment. Oh, Lorelai White, thank you so, so much for the super chat. I see it's your bedtime, so I'm sorry that I didn't get to it sooner. Um, <laughs> yes, thank goodness for the replays. It looks like plum. Yes, this one is very, very plum. Um, and this is the mixture of espresso bean and twilight gray dye powders. Oh, with a tiny bit of brown, tiny, tiny bit of brown. So this yarn is the um, Dyer Supplier 8020 uh, Superwash Merino Nylon. Oof, I am living for this color. Um, and we've definitely, I'm so curious to see how it's going to look because we've definitely got a situation right now with high acid. Um, this is pretty high acid right now. And um, so I'm saying high acid and low. Um, well, yeah, just high acid. So there's some parts where I'm like, ooh, could it be glaze like? I keep expecting it to smell like Kool Aid, and it doesn't. I'm not sure if I'm disappointed. <laughs> um, I have some unused tools, and I'm going ahead and rinsing everything because sometimes you just don't know if there were some stray little powders and you don't want to be going for an icy blue and then end up with some yellow um on it you just you just don't <laughs> but yeah i think overall things oof, that yellow goes a little bit goes a long way because i'm like wiping up my counter i'm not sure if it's the yellow or the fluorescent safety orange But some of these colors, like one particle, can go really far. But this is why, like, I will wipe down my counter first with water, then I'll use like a Clark's wipe, and then I'll do water again and let the um, shower curtain dry. Now, thankfully, oh, there's one little dot that came up my hand. Thankfully, acid dyes don't stain wood but I still don't want to like track them all over my house or anything so that's why okay my floor is dirty not with dye though <laughs> I'm like wiping up more of my floor now and I was like ooh, that's a little brown um so I probably haven't mopped over there in a while but yeah there are no acid dyes on my ground so that is good. That is good. It's always like reassuring when, when I see that and like, you know, nothing by, let's see anything by the tripod. Let's see. Sometimes like on the little like backsplash area, there might be a tiny bit of something, but is why I always oops, wash. <laughs> but yeah, not not bad. This is again like because things can like poop up, you don't want to inhale any acid dyes. So that's why I'm always wearing some kind of mask and glasses to protect myself when I'm working with them. I'm a lot more lax when I'm dealing with stuff in solution, but let's see. 
This is so purple. So awesome. I love, love this kind of color. And it's so different from the rest of what we did today. But um, yeah, from here, uh, I need things to cool. You've had lots of tiny dots of red crash out before in odd spots. Oh, that's not the one I wanted. Yeah, that can happen. Um, and so sometimes if it happens, like you could have a dye stop that isn't completely mixed, especially if it's something that has a component with multiple colors or yeah. So, um, I've had like whenever there's like a single rogue red spot that always like bugs me, uh, because sometimes they're pretty infrequent. So it's just worth paying attention. But if I notice something like that on a yarn that I'm selling, I always, always, always will let you guys know. Um, in the description and I try to like even include a picture um, I'll try to include a picture in the listing where there's an off color but as I said right now I'm having a little flash sale in the cabinets creations Etsy store just 10% off all ready to ship yarns um, with the coupon code dialogue flash uh, this does not apply to dye pot weekly sponsorship um, or like ball cake winding um, but it applies to everything else including like tote bags and other stuff I have in the shop you wish you could do it on purpose <laughs> yeah I'm, it's that's that's the thing with everything it's like the once once you can do things intentionally and so today we'll see how things look when they're dry today I was trying to die based on this curious little fox and you know i definitely have things that feel fox like i don't know if i have yarns and if i lay them like in a collage with this picture you would say oh yeah it's that fox you know but i think that the yarns definitely read fox <laughs> so you know we got somewhere but yeah i just really want to thank all of you for joining me today I'm probably gonna leave this purple in there overnight. I'll turn off the heat in like 10 minutes or so, um, but just to let all that color go in. And then, yeah, probably wash things in, in the morning, I think. Yeah, I think that that makes sense. That makes the most sense to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me. And again, if you want to dial along and do your own version inspired by this photo, um, Make sure that you share it with me on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue or post it in the thread on Facebook. It's the pinned post, but the link to that post is also in this video description. And then when I do the recap of this um, live stream at the beginning of April, I will pick some of your photos of your dyed yarns to include in there. And so it's just kind of fun to see how many similar or different colorways you can get all from one inspiration photo. Because sometimes you get a lot of yeast gains that, you know, two people will independently have the same idea for the same colorway. And then sometimes you get someone, people who will do things completely different. Someone might choose to do a gradient or do something mostly white or, you know, everyone has something different that calls to them from these pictures. And so that's what I think is really, really fun about this. And I hope that you guys enjoyed uh, dying along with me. And I'm glad it's really fun to just sort of play with color. And I think that when I'm doing a pre-filmed video, um, I definitely, I mean, I have moments where like I stop and think, and a lot of those get edited out just for time, but I really enjoy sort of going through with a, I'm just going to throw things together and see what's going to happen. And sometimes I can do that in a pre-filmed way, but sometimes it's fun to just sort of, meander about it and be like well this is a hot mess or and then see how you can turn a hot mess into something really cool and so sometimes it's just not knowing when to stop and just keep layering more and more color and you end up with something really really awesome um oh you guys are great i'll probably post a picture of the dry yarns once they're dry probably by the end of the week um yeah, the skein winder definitely helps things um, 
The skein winder definitely helps things dry a lot faster. Um, it's the skein winder. My Nina Seth spin dryer helps things dry a lot faster. Um, I just have to get things washed quicker. <laughs> That's the part, but I'll probably try instead of washing, try to focus on cleaning up so that way I maybe get the space put back together. <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you enjoyed the stream, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and then consider checking out my Etsy shop or our Patreon um, and all of that jazz. Um, I really, really, truly love um, getting to do this and share this all with you. And I love it when you guys share what you're doing with me too. Um, so there is the, um, I have a Facebook group, Chemnitz Lab. There are over a thousand of us in there, but um, sometimes since I can't always answer everyone's questions, there's a lot of very active people who will help and either point to videos and other stuff um, that I've done. And, uh, but if you have a urgent question, you can always try messaging me on Facebook. Um, I try to respond in a reasonable amount of time. <laughs> Sometimes I'm slow, but yeah, I, I don't know. Thank you. Thank you all so, so much for joining and I will see you guys soon. Uh, I hope that you all have a wonderful evening or morning if you're on the other side of the world and yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Bye everyone.